So today we have Jorge Perez coming to us all the way from Puerto Rico, where it's beautiful and sunny and warm. And uh, Jorge is a Sambia ambassador. He's a Red Can artist, and he is the owner of Hair Lab Studio 407. So please, let's do some fireworks, some explosions, because Jorge deserves them. So everyone say hello to Jorge Perez. Hey, what up, everybody? Everything good? I, I always, I, I can't wait till we have that. Um, you know what? I, it would be good, like, in, during this portion of, like, we had that music on the background. That intro is amazing. Well, guys, today we're working on a mod uh, pixie, and I just want to share with you the divisions that we'll be working with. So let me put it right here so you can see probably all the angles. Here's the back. Here's a circular section, like a kind of downward halo section. And there's a top section. Let me lower this for you guys. Give me a quick second. Oh, there we go. Turn it upward. So you see we have kind of like a halo section that goes all around the top. We're working with a dry cutting today. So it's going to be something fun and interesting. And hope you guys um, enjoy this cut with me. One of the versions of this cut that I always like to do is um, some certain clients are that they did a very short pixie and they want to grow it out. This is a good option for them. So how we'll be starting today, I'm just going to flip this. So we're starting in the back today. And we're going to start with the center section right here. As you can see, I have the center section. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to be working in an uncomfortable position, but it's for your guys so you guys can see it, feel better and be comfortable. Now, if you could do me a favor, share this with somebody so they could get all the love and share the education as we share it with you guys. So I'm using the wide side of the comb because I am working with uh, dry hair. So I'm just going to clip it right here with my fingers, come across and release the hair. Make it that smooth finish. Now we're going to take the opposite side also come again right here lift it to the same position but i'm going to use my guideline just use a little bit of this piece of hair that's right next to it come again right here comb it through make sure everything's good and i'm using for all those lefties in there say hi if you're a lefty i'm using my sambila classic shape for lefties this is my just has turned into my most favorite tool. And I can't stop working with it. I think it's such an amazing tool. Again, I lift. And I release right here. See how it came, all these sections they are. So all these pieces are going to, let me shift it a bit to the side. See these little pieces that all look so natural and peaky? Don't worry about it. We're going to do a little bit of that, but we need it that length. Now we're going to switch to the opposite side. I'm going to divide it right here. Now what we're going to do, elevate it, use my guideline from the previous section, and we're going to release. Come again the same section a little bit faster. Bring it to that corner, elevate it. Can't see there. Now I can see. Can you guys see there good? And we'll release it. So see, it has more of that natural vibe. And I find it very sexy when females leave those short hair or they have it very kind of like that PC grown out look. That looks super cool. So again, now we're moving to the center section. Now we're going to release this top part. Just gonna clip this, get this out of the way. Like I always say, if we're not gonna cut it, see, you know, we have to move it and clip it out of the way. Now all this hair, we're gonna divide it. Let me put it this way so you guys can see better. Give me a shout out, tell me where you're from. I wanna see, I wanna know where people are coming from. We're gonna take a center profile section right here, divide it, grab that clip that we were using earlier, hold it out. Grab my next clip. If you're not using these Sandila dry cuttings clips, ah, oh man, they're awesome. These, these dry clips are a lifesaver 
one of the reasons I enjoy them is because when I do dry cutting, it, it doesn't create those creases or marks and it just helps you out work much, much better. Oh, I see people from Mexico, Illinois, Seattle. Big up everybody, hope you're doing good. Much love from La Isla del Encanto, Puerto Rico. Okay, so now we have our center section. We could do this two different ways. I'm gonna shift it to the side, big up LA. I'm gonna shift it to the side so you guys can see. We could do these two different ways. We can elevate and cut on top or we could divide the section in two that it will have more precision and we'll connect it to the bottom. So it's your choice. I'm gonna use it the simpler way. I'm just gonna have a 45 degree angle of it and I'm going to point cut. Hope you guys can see, let me just bring it in closer. Any questions? We'll have it right here. As soon as I see the question, I will answer if you have any doubts. So we're coming in right here on a 45 degree angle. My position of my hand is also 45. While I'm doing this, I'm creating this roundness right here. I hope you guys can move step back. So you see it's giving that roundness of the head, giving a little bit more volume on the top. So if they're doing a pixie and they're growing it out, this mod pixie will help them have more, um, a better cut because the top will be growing out and you'll just adjust it to the shape of the rest of the hair, even though her cut is short. You know, many times when they're growing out their pixies here in the back, it tends to get all mushed up in a lot of hair. And then they have like a mullet or something weird in the happening in the back. So this time we're just, just making those adjustments. I Jorge, see. Are you connecting that underneath? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, uh, I just explained it two different ways because sometimes we create uh, elevation to create that, have a slight disconnection, but we also can bring it together and be connecting, see as the bottom part, see my guideline right there in the bottom, right here. So we'll continue connecting. So this part, just lower it down to maintain that length. And this end part, we're just going to cut it. There we go. Now you can see that roundness coming in from the top. Now we're going to take our side sections. I'm going to work with this side first. We're going to over direct it to the back. Let me put a clip right here so this hair won't bother us and you guys could see clearly. Shifting it a little back. I'm going to elevate it. See my section of the previous cut right here. Come from the bottom up as I'm a left handed. I'm still maintaining my 45 degree angle. Right there. My guideline is strictly here, right here at the bottom. So you can see I bring my comb up, see my guideline right there at the bottom. Release this. And there we go. So see how it starts making that round shape here. Now we're going to do it the same thing on the opposite side. You flip the mannequin. I'm going to shift my body position to the opposite side. We're still in focus. We're still in frame. Good. Again, combing it through. There's now I see my looking for my guideline. I clip it right here. See my guideline in the bottom. I could see it clearly now. Put my comb in a 45 degree angle and I release that excess of hair. There we go. There we go. So you can see that roundness that while we're shifting it to a 45 degree angle, you still see that roundness that's coming up. So that's when she's growing out her hair, that fullness will be on top so she could continue adjusting. Now, now we're going to work on the sides before we drop the top. Release this section, flip it to the side, and we're going to start working with diagonal back sections. So we shift our comb to a diagonal position. I mean, we make a diagonal section. Take this hair again. I don't want this hair to be bothering us. So 
We shift it to the back, find our guideline. See, it's right there. Now we're going to change the way we're cutting. Now we want to blend in, make more softness in, into the shape. So we comb it back. In this case, I'm going to use to have a little bit more tension. I'm using the fine side of the tooth of the comb, and I will point cut away. Here we go. Diagonal back sections. and have this little shape going to the front. If you could see right here, now we continue taking, bringing down these sections. Let me clip this a little bit higher. I'm sorry if I'm blocking the view. Now we're gonna take this section again, have it right here, point cut away, just to create that softness in the ends. Any questions that you guys may have? There we go. So you see that little shape that's coming up because of the over direction. Now, what's the beauty of this cut is that you could ask the client, like they could shift it behind the ear. Probably you could take a little bit of those sideburns. They could clip it here behind the ear. The mannequin doesn't have big ears, so they can't clip it away but you could at least see, start seeing the shape of what we want to create. See how it blends in with the line that we grew in the back. So as they throw the hair behind, the, behind their ear, it comes out really cute, okay? Now I'm shifting to the opposite side. There we go, now we're playing a merry-go-round. Now I'm gonna clip this up. That didn't work and that one fell. Everything's okay, we're gonna this one here and thank god that we always have magically another clip very close to you when that happens so now we have that diagonal section let's bring it here take that clip that we were saving right there now what we're going to do is just bring it back use our wide side of the comb to find our section Flip it around. There we go. I got it again. Now we're going to point cut. I'm going to this time, I'm just going to point cut right here. Just blend it in and release it. Take that last section that we had right here, bring it in. There we go. As you could see, how do you sometimes make sure you're on the right position? Sometimes you have to like stop and look at yourself in the mirror. And how do I know I have my perfect on a 45 degree angle? My, the hair is coming back. My hand, if you could see, I have like a V shape right here. That's how you know you have it on your correct way on a 45 degree angle. And sometimes we tend to forget and check ourselves. I think we should be sometimes be more uh, aware of what we're doing and just like every time just jump back hey dude am I doing this right am I doing this the right the correct way and this is something that I always like to keep in tune and just look at myself in the mirror and see if I have my right position so right now as you can see my elbow is elevated my fingers are pointing to the corner of the room and I am releasing this right here Jorge, I think you mentioned it, but um, what's what uh, what makes the decision for you whether you cut dry or cut wet? Well, I can cut it out if my preference will always be cutting wet. That's my personal preference. Um, but this time, I did I did a test before. Okay, let me quick story. Um, Puerto Rico, we don't do daylight savings time, so I was an hour earlier, and I worked the cut, and I saw that it worked better on dry cutting this particular cut because of the texture and the movement that I wanted to create. Now, if it's for you easier probably to work it on a dry, do it dry. If it looks perfect for you or easier for you to replicate while you're doing it wet, go ahead. I personally love cutting wet hair, and I cut, but just love it. But there are certain cuts that, you know, you can't be that type of person that, no, I only do wet cuts or I only do, I have to wet the cut. You know, you have to explore. That's why as my t-shirt says, 
knowledge is power. So how do you gain knowledge? You have to like bet, like go to that corner where you're not comfortable and find it. Like Sam once said, it's something that I always have taken it um, very to heart is the fact of the matter that you could do a cut whichever way you want, right? But if you do that cut, how many different ways can you do it? Can you start it from the front to the back? Can you start it from one side? And that's what gives you that mastery of cutting, understanding what 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 or how you can do that cut in different ways. Hope that answered the question. So now I'm releasing the top, taking these clips for the sections that I don't want to touch while I'm cutting the top section. Bring it here. And so this is something that uh, it's very important. Don't live, you're not cutting it, get, get that hair out of the way. Don't let it bother you. Don't make it, um, don't make it stand in that position where it's gonna bother the cut or you're just gonna bring um, different pieces. Oh, much love to India. I see India, somebody from India just connected and say, said hi. Okay, so now we're gonna take the top of the head we're working on the top. I did, uh, let me comb this through so you guys could see it way much better. Okay, I have a right a section right in the center of the mannequin's head. Ah, it's moving. So this section in the center, let me clean this up a bit that you guys are my mirror and I didn't see that it was a little crooked. Clip this away to make sure it's right. Okay, here we go. So we did a right a strong section right at the center. It's not, I always like to maintain my sections not wider than my comb to have much more control of what I'm working with. Okay, so here I'm going to elevate the hair top center and find that hair that I already cut from the back or the top part of the crown. Now, this is where we create that softness and that texture. I've One of my favorite techniques that I'm gonna be sharing with you now that I've done it many times. My comb just fell, but I always have another one. So as you can see, I'm cutting, but I'm creating that softness right at the ends. Make sure it blends in together right so have that softness on top now we'll take the top part comb it through now we're going to do the opposite as you saw this side we did it first and i shifted to this way i want to maintain that length on the top so i'm just going to take this little piece away comb it in together elevate it Based on the roundness of the head, if this was the top part, I'm elevating it 90 degrees from the base of the head. Now I come in with my shear on the opposite side. I'm gonna shift a bit so you guys can see. I'm coming outward from, um, from the bottom up. And I'm while the process that I'm elevating, I'm just gonna shift it around. It's not that you have to shift the hair. I just wanna see how you guys see it I want you guys to see it while I close my shear. So I'm coming in and while I am closing my shear outward, I'm just creating little hinges or little peaks to make that cut have that softness on top. So as you can see, I'm cutting this one. So I'm gonna be standing on the right position where I should be. And I'm going to cut it away. Come again right here. that create that softness that I want. And I come back here, that little, those little pieces that I didn't come exactly the way or got cut the way I wanted, I blend them in with my shear. Like I said, I'm using my seven inch dry cutting classic San Vila. I love long shears, I'm on crazy for long shears. Okay, now. Okay, sorry to interrupt, we have a question. Ahead. 
Um, oh, sure. I believe the question is asking if, if the hair is curly, would you recommend straightening it before you dry cut? Well, that depends on what cut are you trying to achieve. If you're cutting curly hair to make a curly cut, uh, it could work. It could actually work, work if you're using your, your shear and cutting those curls in an angle, not cutting it bluntly or straight, because then the ends of the, of the curls will open up. So you have to cut it where that curl pattern swirls. You got to cut it technically on that position. On this cut, if the hair was curly, most definitely I would try to do it dry or straighten it out because I think it would be much, much easier to work with. Hope that answered your question. Yes, I'm not. Uh, there's somebody asked right there, uh, are my, am I closing the shear or am I sliding? I'm actually closing it. As the same movement that I'm sliding it, I'm closing it at the end. So I'm using using the stronger part of my shear to make that cut. While I'm pushing it, I'm closing it at the same time. Um, let me see that I'm just gonna take this part, do a section right here. Let me bring this in closer so you could see the movement of the shear. I'm not explaining the cut, I'm just explaining the movement of my shear. There we go. So I have it here. Now, if I stand in front of you guys, you guys were looking at me. What is going on with the hair that I have right here? What's going on? I'm over directly to the center. So this side would be slightly longer. Okay. Now I'm going to put it again in the position that I was putting, get it, get it a little bit closer. Here we go. I elevate it, have the section that I want. I over direct it to the center. Now, let me stand this way. Hope you guys could see it better. See my shears are open. Let me see if I can see it on camera better. Okay, here we go. So you see it's coming in, the, like the two blades are open. So I come in and while I shift it out, as I'm coming in and I close the shear right where I'm getting to the end. So I'm coming in and I'm closing on the way out. Hope you guys got it, okay? Now I double check, let me cut it again because I was doing the benefit for you guys to see. I really enjoy a lot cutting this way because it gives a similar texture to what could be like a razor cut. It has that similar softness. And I really enjoy it. I enjoy that softness in the hair. But when you just shake it, the hair holds its stuff together. Taking one last piece of the left side, bringing it all up. Hope you guys can see me there. Can you see everything good? Let me know in the chat box if you guys can see me. And you're welcome, Afi. So here again, bring it up again together, close it up here. I'm just gonna take all those hairs that I couldn't grab, point cut them. There we go. Make sure you release them and you have that texture. Now, after I did this side, I'm just gonna work it a little bit, make a little adjustments to it. Now I'm gonna make diagonal. Now I'm just gonna divide it as a piece of pie. I'm gonna go from my top, the top part of the head and I'm just gonna be start swinging around, making sure I touch every section or it has the texture that I want. So I'm going right here at the back. I'm elevating, see these pieces of strands that don't belong there, because it doesn't connect. There you go, I release them. Come again to the center. Elevate them again. Those strands are not working for me. And I release them. 
see how that natural movement and that bounciness comes together. The, what I like about cutting this way is the fact that the hair holds one to another. It, they just like they're different. They not all the hairs meet at the same place, so it has that weightlessness, and they just grab each other one to another. Okay, again, right here. Take it from the top. Again. And I keep releasing. And finding those little strands that don't work for me and have that nice texture, that softness that I really enjoy. I think one of the things that having that capability of understanding how the hair works and how the hair moves and having that idea of that fabric of the hair. See, it starts having that lived-in feel. And I think this is something that's going to be so strong. These, like, these are coming days, and all you see these techniques that people have more of that careless or feel-free look. I think we just start shifting and adapting to those type of haircuts. Oh, somebody said there, huepa. Hola, Yaira. Espero que estés bien. Buenos días. Got to give love to my friends that they're popping up in the chat box. Okay, so the same thing we're going to do on the opposite side. We're going to release this. Take that section away. I'm going to stand where? In my opposite side. Because I want to bring it in. So I elevate this piece, take this a little bit away, have it right here, bring it into my side, and release. Again, bring it all that hair together. I shift it on this angle. Now I'm going to, so you guys can see better. And I'll release. Now grab this part of the hair, comb it up, all that excess. I'm going to shift it aside so you guys can see or appreciate better. And push my body to a little bit more to the left. Now I see I come in, close, 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 while I'm moving my shear. And that's the beauty of, of these shears, guys. I've been hairdressing probably for more for 10 years or so. And these have been one of the most amazing tools that I have had. And I enjoy a lot. I like I say, I like to use long shears because. Okay, the question is, is there another way to do it faster? There's always, I don't think. When you're trying to create a craft about something or about your cut, going faster doesn't mean it's going to come out better. Um, my idea to this is that there are always faster ways to do it. There are. As I'm teaching it, I like I just love to go slow so you guys can like appreciate every detail of the cut. And probably if I was doing it in a salon, I would probably do it in less 30 minutes for probably less. But on the purpose of doing the cut and explaining it at the same time, yeah, I like to go detail by detail so you guys could enjoy it. Hola, no saw me. It's so fun. Uh, my my salon assistant just popped up. No saw me Rivera. So she's one of the coolest people that I know and I love her a lot, even though she's not understanding what I'm saying. Te quiero montón, no saw me. Okay, the question is, do you, do you bring the hair and cut into their port. Okay, they put it bigger. Parts that you bring to the center. Yes, as you can see, I started a guideline at the center and I bring it up there. And I move it as, as okay, so let me just shift this so I can explain this better. So here I go. I'm shifting it to the center. My section is not very clean. 
now it is there we go so i pop it up at the center and then i shift it forward to maintain the same roundness of the head so i'm cutting at 90 degrees in every angle so that means i start at the top and i shift it round now today is what May, march 7th and i hope you guys are taking advantage of sam has a uh, sam vila has a super super fun sale on today so i think today is the last day so if you're trying to get shears these should be your babies these should be your babies seven inch classic if you're a lefty even better so i'm picking it up again there we go Now, most of you probably are even asking me, while you're seeing this, have you cut your fingers? Yes, I have. We're in a safe place, guys. It's part of the journey of learning. I like to shake it a bit just to see how the shape is coming out. If the hair is moving the right way I want to, and it has those beautiful shapes and things that I like, if they hold out, it's even much more fun. So could you also do this with the 14 tooth? Hey, let's go slow. I got to show you a trick with the 14 tooth cutting comb. Yes, you can. And that's my second favorite chair. So here we go. Lift it here a bit. So now when your cut is almost done, I know where everybody's doing the center part and they're doing like the butterfly thing and it's so 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 cool so i've been thinking that things progress and they shape and they shift so i started working on a huge side part and i've been clients of mine have been liking this like back to the summer vibes with these natural um texture looking cuts so i'm i'm gonna work with uh doing it like a huge side part as you can see it right now things are progressing so i'm gonna shift it to the side as you see um this section is right here connected way to the corner of the eyebrow not farther away if you want to play with it go ahead but i am really um working on this to this point right here this will be my reference point so what I do is I'm going to take a sample you know, clip, clip this to the side, comb it to a diagonal to the opposite side of the head, comb that away. And I want the hair to fall to the right side. So I'm going to cut it on the left side. Okay. So I'm standing on the left side, but when I release it, it's going to naturally move to the um, right side. I'm cutting on the left side, and it's going to move to the naturally to the opposite side. So I'm bringing it in, make sure I gather it all together. I like to rest my finger on the cheekbone, but this is your decision. This is what you like. So if you, you don't have to necessarily fall on the cheekbone. You can follow it wherever you want. On my choice, I like to use the cheekbone as a reference. So I come here, make that natural progression. As you can see, I have an angle. This hair is traveling longer, so this is going to be the width of the long side. This side is shorter, so this is going to be the other connection. So as you can see, I'm point cutting. Now comes my fun part. This is where we all hairdressers like to play. I'm taking my San Vila point cutting shear 14 tooth. I'm going to elevate it, take it, divide it in two sections right here. See how it's kind of softly moved to the opposite side when I let it go. Hold this right here. Take my 14 tooth. And just cut that. 
And when you start shifting it here, see how, how easily it starts just moving to that direction. Take this hair that I have and just creating that little texture in it and making those short hairs hold on to those longer ones. So come in again. Kind of like a teasing part. And see how it starts holding to that side without even, not even blow drying. That's super cool. Now we like my favorite part is when we do the details. I think it's very important after a cut, we create these details that we want and have just making it personal for each client. You know, you have to like have those details make them special for each of these clients. Good question here from me. Yeah, sorry, you saw it right, right as I was about to bring it up. Yeah. Go for it. So this technique is very good for texture hair. I think that's, uh, it, it, you have to also think, what are you trying to create? I don't, I think we have to start absorbing all these different personalizing techniques to see what we can create with them. Can they, like all techniques, go with all types of hair? Maybe no, or maybe yes. It has to, you just have to be like adjusting to what are you trying to create? Now, if for textured hair, depending how much, what are you trying to create? What would be your end result? That would be the actually like, what should you be targeting when you want to do this? Oh yeah, I want to create a, a more texture or have that uh, more fine or flowy ends. Yeah, probably that would be a good option. So sometimes you just have to be very, very aware of what you're trying to achieve. I hope I answered your question. If you have another one, pop it up. Um, I'm afraid this will play. I'm afraid it will play in volume. Okay, yeah, that's a different thing. Shorter hairs will always push. I, I, it's something that I believe in. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but this is something that I've seen it when I work um, on hair is the fact of the matter that uh, shorter hair, when you cut it, are going to push or elevate the longer hair. So it yes, it will create volume. OK, sorry, I'm, I'm reading in my head. OK, Sherry says, how long did you take to find your groove once you started? Ah, man, that's a good question. I don't know. I think I. I'm just a groovy guy. I don't know. Maybe it's that. So or he was born with the, groove. Yeah, I think I was. Maybe I, I'm going to ask my mom. I swear I'm going to call her after I finish this class. Mom, was I always been groovy? Maybe I was. I don't know. But I think the more you're comfortable, you start feeling with hair and you start feeling and you start understanding hair, that will just, it automatically shifts and you start feeling comfortable with what you do. And the most important thing to me is knowing what you're doing. And when you start knowing, you get a little bit edgier. You start to bend the rules a little bit more. Que bueno que te conteste tu pregunta. De nada. So I'm going to like elevate right here. Let me just shift it because I think you guys are right here next to me. I'm feeling very comfortable. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to stand in front of it. Yes, Sam, I know. Maybe I am good. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this side apart. Let me just clip this out right here. I'm going to take this part, make a diagonal forward section, and I'm going to use my razor. And I like to detail it a lot. So I like, I like to play with details. Details make, the, make hair, haircuts just beautiful. Because, you know, it makes that cut so personal for the client. And they're, the client, and your client's going to love it. Every time you just take, I like to use it like this as a pen, just to create little, little hinges. Just make it special for your client. Sometimes we want to cut fast. And I just like to tell my coworkers, and I, and I like to tell them this. Um, what do you enjoy about going when you go to fine restaurants and stuff like that? The time they take you to serve you and treat you right. So just go with that, you know, go with something details, make it fun for your client, make them feel special. You know, they could have so many choices to go 
to any other salon. So many choices, but they chose yours. So you give them that experience and the value of them, you taking care of them, taking time, like, okay, just a little bit piece by piece. I want to make your cut look so beautiful. So do that. You know, I think it's better than fast food. Maybe it's just me. So now I'm working, I'm going to start, I did those little details, now I'm going to shift it to the opposite side. And I'm going to work the same thing. So I did, a, I did the fringe, now I'm just going to like slowly blend that in. As you can see, I'm using my Sam Vila razor. If you don't have it, must go tool, take advantage of today. We had, there's a special going out, so, and it's the last day of the special, take advantage of it. As you can see, I'm using it, and I know people sometimes freak out because I'm doing I'm doing on dry hair. Okay, every time you use it, use a new blade. Okay, use a new blade. Don't use the one that you've been using like from since 2020 because you don't use it a lot. Respect your client. I value for your client. Your client values you. Treat them with value. There we go. Now I'm gonna jump back to the to my 14 tooth. This is becoming like I was so accustomed to working with long shears, and I created a lot of texture with this. Right? I created a lot, a lot of a lot of things. But as soon as I was introduced to this baby, I'm just gonna pop it here so you guys can see it. When I got introduced to this, my whole cutting change and i started wow i could do this i could do that like i always say two people that i'm enjoying that are giving amazing work follow them right now roger molina is doing excellent work with this and becca try to follow these two people from the time Vila team they are doing crazy things with and cool things oh and also my friend mandy she's doing great things you know so try to like find them out what they're doing they got good 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 work coming out now, when I like to use my 14 tooth, I don't like to readily do this type of movement. I like to work diagonal as I was point cutting. And it gives me more an invisible view, as you can see. Have more texture to it. I elevate it, shift this to the side, elevate it, 14 tooth. As you can see, I'm blending in, creating that softness on a diagonal. See how the hair starts moving, holding one to another. See the shape that it's creating. The S-shape, this year is like, I don't, I really want to meet the person that really thought about this 14 too. Some people are accustomed to doing this. I just love point cutting with them. See how it holds there together? I just love this year, man. I'm sorry, but this year is amazing. If you don't got, get one, today is the day to get it. And I will be receiving all your comments like, damn, wow, this looks good. As soon as you start working with this year, your world's, your hair cutting game is going to change. As you can see, I am blending it in. And it gives me that softness, but if I put the comb together, do you see that I'm actually, let me move here to the side. Do you see any markations? Do you see anything different? It looks like the piece is so softly at the end. I just love this cut. I really, I really, I really do. Come again, do the same thing, elevate it. So guys, this has been so much fun sharing time with you here. I can't say I'm done, but I'm going to keep on cutting here. But I did. We're almost done for the day. Jorge, um, another question Go here ahead. from Haley. You Sorry, know, I didn't see it. Asking, should a razor finish always be used on a short pixie, or just when we think it's needed? I think it's more when you when you think you need it, than actually when you. I think it's when needed. So I, 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 I don't want to nail you guys to, to an idea. I really would like to say more. What are you? What, what is your wish? What, what are you trying to create? 
What are you trying to do? What is your goal? And sometimes when you need probably little small details or pieces that you want to um, work with, yeah, sure, go with the razor. But if you think it's like the right tool to, to achieve it, there are certain times that you're, it's just your shear that you might need. I think that would be the best answer. But if you have so many tools that's right there laying in front of you, start playing with your tools. The same way you know your shear, you have to know your razor, your 14 tooth coin cutting. I, you know, and you start adjusting them to your toolbox to, to work better and improve your skill. And I think this is amazing when you start doing this. Um, so I would say, yeah, try it. And if it works, hey, pat your, tap your shoulder on the shoulder. I did a good job. I thought it was cool and it worked out. Just be knowledgeable of what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. It would be my best suggestion. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit shorter because I think it will, it will look cooler. And if she had her ear the way I wanted it to, because I keep visualizing the ear here. Take a little sideburn out, see how cool that, that piece will look. Just comb it like that, hold it like that, and probably will stay in place. Oh, my client, the one that's in the picture, that she's actually a client of mine in the salon. And she just loves this cut, but she says it's so versatile and she enjoys it a lot when she, uh, she doesn't like to comb her hair a lot. She just likes to just walk away, push it, tuck it behind her ear and voila, and she's out. So I'm just trying here fighting to make sure it could stay behind the ear, but I think it won't. Anyways, guys, this has been so much fun sharing with you this time. This is my idea of a mod pixie. I, like I said, I would suggest it a lot. If you guys are trying to have that client, and I think I'm going to be here to 3.30 trying to make this hair stick under the mannequin's ear. But this is a way that, an excellent way that you guys could really, really just start playing. I don't, don't box yourself with certain tools. I think you just start exploring. Like I said, to me, your must have. Tool number one, seven inch for lefties, dry cutting shear. That's my favorite. Second favorite, 14 tooth, point cutting shear, must have. Last but not least, the details. The details. Oh, there's my friend, Manda, what's up? So Manda is an excellent, she does, she, she I learned a couple of tricks watching her cutting, so. We all learn from each other. So she's excellent with this too also. So guys, it's been fun. I, I, I'm seeing the love right there at the chat box. And guys, just like play with your tools, play with your tools, play with your tools. Something I really appreciate, Jorge, just about how you answered quite a few of the questions is coming back to what's the result that you want. And, uh, you know, I also I appreciate the fact that you didn't make any statements like, well, you always have to do it this way. And, and, and you know, this fabric or this texture, or this, that, you know, there's so many rules that we're taught. And uh, I like that you just always bring it back to, well, what do you want? Instead of it being these hard, fast rules, bring it back to, mm -hmm. hey, sure, you can do this on anything, but it comes back to what are you trying to achieve? So love, love that approach to how you look at haircutting. Yeah, I think, and, and, and just seeing the fact, sometimes when we start limiting ourselves, we just start limiting our creativity. And there was a book that you recommended that was Think, Think, Think Again, that you recommended to me. So that really changed my perspective. You know what? If I think this is the only tool that I can use hey, for cutting, maybe then I can't be creative or do the cuts I do. So true. Well, thank you, Jorge. We hope you enjoy the sunny day there in Puerto Rico. And thank you so Today's much for your time. Day. Say that again. Today is a beach day. It's a beach day. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. Love you guys. Hope to see you very soon again. Take care.